where the light is at its most beautiful, sunrise in California. Nature is mysterious in so many ways. Originally, he wanted to be an author. Today, he is making his mark in brain research. Carl Dysaroth is a neuroscientist at Stanford University and a psychiatrist. I think that the two biggest mysteries that nature poses for us is, is where does it all come from? Uh, and, and then the other mystery is, is about the human brain and, and, or about the, the brain in general. It has to do with the nature of, of the subjective sense, the feelings we have. Uh, it, it is quite a profound uh, question how, how an object like the, the brain can have a, a subjective inner sense. The complex circuits of the brain that control our behavior and feelings are still largely unknown. And this is the puzzle that he wants to solve. Carl Dysaroth is a pioneer in optogenetics. The technique involves using light to turn specific nerve cells on and off, a revolution in neuroscience. Optogenetics is a uh, scientific method, a tool that we use for discovery to try to understand these principles of brain function. And what it is, it's using light to control brain cells. And this is the opposite of how we normally think about the use of light. Using light in an entirely new way. With optogenetics, we deliver light into brains uh, to control them, turn cells on or off. And this is very uh, useful, very powerful. Uh, we can do this by introducing genes, single genes that we get from algae, from bacteria. And these are genes that turn light into electricity within cells. We can uh, target it to one kind of cell or another kind of cell. We can turn on or off the neurons that make dopamine or that are involved in planning or memory. And this uh, is something that has allowed us, even in behaving animals, to understand what neurons are, are actually doing. The method helps us better understand neurological disorders, such as depression, anxiety disorder, or schizophrenia. However, as a psychiatrist, Dysaroff also hopes that it will lead to new findings about motivation, aggression, and addictive behavior. Optogenetics is interesting from a, a sort of a philosophical standpoint, I would say. It's, it's not so much an ethical issue per se, because nobody right now is trying to control human behavior with optogenetics. Uh, it's something that could be done uh, in the future. Um, once we really understood what we were doing, we had a very deep uh, you know, foundation uh, that, uh, built over many decades to, to understand exactly what we were doing. Shedding light into the dark, this is another thing that Dysaroth has achieved with clarity. The innovative method makes it possible to see even the smallest structures and connections in dead tissue. Clarity is a way of turning uh, a tissue like the brain uh, transparent. How do we do this? Well, uh, normally uh, brains aren't transparent uh, because they have a lot of lipids in them as well as water. And photons, light particles, get scattered. Uh, they bounce off in different directions when they see lipids in water. The gel that we build in place, this is a chemical engineering trick, we build what's called a hydrogel in place into the tissue, in all the cells, to give it strength, to lock all the molecules in place so they don't move, and then we can remove all the lipids very stringently. A mouse brain by light. Clarity makes it possible to take high-resolution 3D images of any organ, but also of the spinal cord, a very promising approach for the medical field, one example being cancer research. You can see how much more transparent this one is after two days of the Clarity process, but also how, it, how much bigger it is. It's expanded as well. In future, Dysaroth wants to combine optogenetics with the Clarity method to benefit patients. He's inspired by his work with students. What is it like to work for him? Yeah, Carl gives me a lot of a lot of freedom to really design the workshops how I want to do them, and, and yeah. yeah. We had to figure out uh, sort of together how to make it work. Carl Dysaroth, a life devoted to research and science. His family is his safe haven. The father of five is proud of his children. 
This is Alexander. He is my uh, second oldest son. He's currently 10 years old. <laughs> this is a drawing uh, from my daughter, uh, who is uh, five years old, and I don't think that's uh, me. Um, <laughs> Always remain true to yourself. Go your own way. This message is important to him. I would advise actually the same thing for both my children and my students, which uh, is to, to work on uh, what's most beautiful to you. And actually, if you if you're inspired all the time by what you do, if you think it's wonderful, if you think it's beautiful, everything, even the hard parts of it, uh, don't matter anymore. And, and so that would be my advice. It's certainly what I've done in my own life. And I think it doesn't matter if you're a scientist or anything, is, is just follow the beauty.